In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with all of you. Amen. Today we come together and celebrate the Mass for the preservation of peace and justice as we remember uh, all those who died in 9-11 and all those who put themselves in harm's way to rescue others. And so as we take a moment now to call to mind our own sin, the times we have not always been there for one another, as God is there for us, we ask for mercy and forgiveness. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do, through my fall, through my fall, through my most grievous fall. Therefore, I ask Blessed Mary, ever virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. O God, who show a Father's care for all, Grant in your mercy that the members of the human race to whom you have given a single origin may form in peace a single family and always be united by a fraternal spirit. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, if I preach the gospel, this is no reason for me to boast, for an obligation has been imposed on me, and woe to me if I do not preach it. If I do so willingly, I have recompense, but if unwillingly, then I have been entrusted with a stewardship. What then is my recompense? That when I preach, I offer the gospel free of charge so as not to make full use of my right in the gospel. Although I am free in regard to all, I have made myself a slave to all, so as to win over as many as possible. I have become all things to all, to save at least some. All this I do for the sake of the gospel, so that I too may have a share in it. Do you not know that the runners in the stadium all run in the race, but only one wins the prize? Run so as to win. Every athlete exercises discipline in every way. They do it to win a perishable crown, but we are imperishable one. Thus I do not run aimlessly. I do not fight as if I were shadow boxing. No, I drive my body and train it for fear that, after having preached to others, I myself should be disqualified. The word of the Lord. How lovely is your dwelling place, Lord, mighty God. My soul yearns and pines for the courts of the Lord, my heart and my flesh, Cry out for the living God. Even the sparrow finds a home, and the swallow a nest, in which she puts her young, your altars, O Lord of hosts, my King and my God. Blessed are they who dwell in your house. Continually they praise you. Bless the men whose strength you are. Their hearts are set upon the pilgrimage. For a sun and a shield in the, is the Lord God. Grace and glory he bestows. The Lord withholds no good thing from those who walk in sincerity. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. 
your word, O oh Lord, is truth. Consecrate us in the truth. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Jesus told his disciples a parable. Can a blind person guide a blind person? Will not both fall into a pit? No disciple is superior to the teacher, but when fully trained, every disciple will be like his teacher. Why do you notice the splinter in your brother's eye, but do not perceive the wooden beam in your own? How can you say to your brother, Brother, let me remove that splinter in your eye? when you do not even notice the wooden beam in your own eye. You hypocrite, remove the wooden beam from your eye first, then you will see clearly to remove the splinter in your brother's eye. The Gospel of the Lord. I came across this interesting um, little tidbit it's in her book, The Dolphin in the Mirror, Diana Reese writes that human beings and dolphins seem to share a very special emotion, empathy. Dr. Reese, director of dolphin research at Baltimore's National Aquarium, observes this. I've been involved in many rescues of dolphins, some of which have been stranded on beaches. And I'm always struck by the way that people rush to help. The impulse to do so is almost primal. There's just something about the presence of dolphins that touches us. At some point during the rescues, I usually find myself standing in waist deep water with at least one other person supporting the distressed animal so that it won't sink and drown. Not so long ago, it struck me that what my colleagues and I do in these situations is mirrored by what dolphins sometimes do when they rescue a person troubled at sea. They stop the person from sinking and drowning by positioning themselves alongside him or her on each side. It's a beautiful symmetry of the actions of humans and dolphins. In the gospel today, Jesus talks about the beam in our eye, he talks about the blind person. He talks about supporting each other. And one of the ways we do that is to recognize our own sin so that we can then help others in their lives, not to pick out their sin necessarily, but certainly to help them on their journey. It's almost like supporting one another. Part of the Christian reality, and that's why the Christian community grew so greatly, was because so many other religions at the time were really, and not completely, certainly, they did good works and so forth, but they were very much kind of focused on the individual. And the Christian community had the individual second and the other person first. And when people were struggling and having a difficulty, they did exactly what the story says. They gathered around them, lifted them up, and helped them not to sink and drown. I think about those people on 9-11. I drove, I came from the office this morning, and if you notice, I don't know where you guys were driving, it was really, just brought back all those memories of the day that I was standing in the, my room at Christ Our King and was on my way to a meeting, and I was watching the television, and I was standing there in complete disbelief of what, had, what was happening that morning. Um, like the death of John Kennedy, I don't remember where I was because I was only a year old, but everybody remembers where they were. It's one of those moments that really profoundly affects you. And what was most amazing was the people that put their lives on the line to rescue, went back into burning buildings, risked their lives as debris and people fell from windows just so that they could support others and not have them sink and drown. 
To me, that is the example of what we do as Christian people. That's what preservation and the world peace is about, is about us being there for one another. I'm not telling you anything you don't already know, but I think it's a good reminder. And one of the last things that this little article said, which was related to today's readings, actually, in today's gospel, Jesus calls us to embrace the virtue of empathy that Dr. Reese and her colleagues observe in dolphins, a sense that we are all part of something greater than just ourselves, a realization that we also struggle with splinters and beams in our vision, a readiness to support one another when we are sinking. Often the gospel beam in our own eyes, simply not understanding exactly why something happened or being aware of an individual's circumstances or forgetting that we may have done something or neglected to do something that is equally responsible for what happened. Jesus asks us to deal with failures of others with the humility to realize our own failings and the grace to reach out to them as others have reached out to us. Today, this article reminds us, be the empathetic dolphin for someone who is sinking. We're also celebrating something joyful today. Isn't it amazing how we remember the difficult moments, but we also celebrate 50 years of married life together. Bob and Marsha Muller are gonna come forward in just a minute. But my, I would venture to say in not having ever been married, um, probably everyone is you know, breathing a sigh of relief, but um, you know, I think it's a great image for marriage. I mean, what a great image. Being there to support each other, to celebrate the joys and all those kinds of things, that's, that's all part of it. But to be there to lift each other up, to make sure that you don't sink, God forbid to make sure you don't drown. For your children, the way you've lifted them up over the years and have walked side by side with them in their joys and in their sorrows, I don't necessarily know that you want to be equated to dolphins, although it could be worse. It could be a lot worse. And so I think today we celebrate not only 50 years of marriage, which is actually tomorrow, but we're going to do a blessing today. But we celebrate 50 years of a reality in your lives, nothing perfect, we're all sinners, we know that. But a, an example of being some really good dolphins for a lot of people and a great witness to each of us about what it means to lift others up. So would you guys come forward, please? everyone to please stand and if you would please raise your hands and blessing over Bob and Marsha. Let us pray. Loving and gracious God as we come before you today, as always we begin in all things by thanking you and praising you for the blessings that you bestow on each of us. Today we ask you to continue to shine your blessings upon Bob and Marsha as you have done in these many years of their relationship, but especially in the 50 years of their marriage. We ask that they continue to strengthen each other, to lift each other up, to continue to be the wonderful example of Christian love that they have been for all these years. Fill them with your grace and your joy, and help us to always be there for them as they walk their journey of life together. And we ask the blessing of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit to descend upon you and remain with you always. God bless you. Let's give him another hand. You can still remain standing. We're going to do this. Uh, but I said to, I can't believe, I said, now Bob, I can believe, has been married 50 years, but not Marsha. I just can't believe that they've been married 50 years. She looks so young. Um, so, oops, I gotta, there we go. put me back over here. Get me back over here. All right. 
And let us now turn to God, the Father of us all, with the needs of our neighbors and of our whole world. For the church throughout the world, may God continue to bless, purify, and sanctify her in building his kingdom. Let us pray to the Lord. For those in public office, may God bless their efforts in defending the dignity and sanctity of life from conception through natural death. Let us pray to the Lord. For the victims of war, violence, and hatred, we remember especially all those who lost their lives in 9-11. May the Lord grant them healing and strength. Let us pray to the Lord. For those gathered here, may God, who is love and grows, whose, God, whose love grows in us ever greater every day, fill us with his spirit of compassion, forgiveness, and love for one another. Let us pray to the Lord. For all of our men and women in the armed forces at home and abroad, for men and women in blue, first responders, corrections officers, and all those who put their lives on the line for our safety, let us pray to the Lord. For the faithful departed, the day we remember especially Frank Malone, for whom this Mass is being offered, that Frank and all the dearly departed may be welcomed into the light of God's heavenly kingdom, let us pray to the Lord. And finally, Oh, and let's also pray for all, all married people, especially for Baba Marcia today, but all those who are married, that they may continue to grow in love for one another. Let us pray to the Lord. And finally, for all the prayers we now hold in the silence of our hearts. And calling on the intercession of our Blessed Mother for healing in our world, we pray, Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death, amen. Loving God, we offer these prayers to you in complete trust in your love and compassion. We make our prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands, and become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands that will become our spiritual drink. Amen. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of our hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and good of all his holy church. May the saving sacrifice of your son, the King of Peace, offered under sacramental signs that signify peace and unity, strengthen, we pray, O Lord, concord among all your children, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, right and just. it is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Father of mercies and faithful God. For you have given us Jesus Christ, your Son, as our Lord and Redeemer. He always showed compassion for children and for the poor, for the sick and for sinners, and he became a neighbor to the oppressed and the afflicted. By word and deed, he announced to the world that you are our Father and that you care for all your sons and daughters. And so with all the angels and the saints, we exalt and bless your name and sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, and to be glorified, O God, who love the human race, and who always walk with us on the journey of life. Blessed indeed is your Son present in our midst, when we who are gathered by his love, and when as once for his disciples, and so now for us, he opens the scriptures and breaks the bread. Therefore, Father most merciful, 
We ask that you send forth your Holy Spirit to sanctify these gifts of bread and wine, that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer on the night of the Last Supper, he took bread and said the blessing. He broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and gave you thanks. He gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of a new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith, when we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, Holy Father, as we celebrate the memorial of Christ your Son, our Savior, whom you led through his passion and death on the cross to the glory of the resurrection, and whom you have seated at your right hand, we proclaim the work of your love until he comes again, and we offer you the bread of life and the chalice of blessing. Look with favor on the oblation of your church in which we show forth the paschal sacrifice of Christ that has been handed on to us, and grant that by the power of the spirit of your love, we may be counted now and until the day of eternity among the members of your Son in whose body and blood we have communion. Bring your church, O Lord, to perfect faith and charity, together with Francis our Pope and Francis our Bishop, with all bishops, priests, deacons, and the entire people that you have made your own. Open our eyes to the needs of our brothers and sisters. Inspire us in words and actions to comfort those who labor and are burdened. Make us serve them truly after the example of Christ, and at his command, may your church stand as a living witness to, the, to truth and freedom, to peace and justice, that all people may be raised up to a new hope. Remember all of our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the peace of Christ, and all the dead whose faith you alone have known. Admit them to rejoice in the light of your face, and in the resurrection give them the fullness of life. Grant also to us, when our earthly pilgrimage is done, that we may come to an eternal dwelling and live with you forever there in communion with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, St. Michael, and with all the saints, we shall praise and exalt you through Jesus Christ, your Son. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, when we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world.
Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Let us pray. Bestow on us, we pray, O Lord, the spirit of charity, so that sustained by the body and blood of your only begotten Son, we may be effective in nurturing among all the peace that he has left us, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life.